Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about redox reactions, particularly in biological systems. So what are redox reactions? Redox reactions are chemical reactions that transfer electrons between reactants. Usually this means that there is an oxidation reaction occurring along with a reduction reaction occurring. An oxidation reaction is where a substance loses electrons or is oxidized. In reduction, a substance gains electrons or is reduced. That is, it's reduced in the amount of positive charge. So for instance, in this example, X here has an electron and it loses that electron so it becomes oxidized. So that is a oxidation reaction. Y here gains an electron so it becomes reduced. In every reaction, if there is a loss of an electron, that electron gets transferred to another reactant. And so that's why we call these redox reactions or oxidation reduction reactions. Now oxidation and reduction be can be hard terms to remember what they mean. So there are a couple ways to help remember that. The one that I like is Leo the lion says grrr. In other words, lose electron oxidation, gain electron reduction. There's another way too that I think is a little boring. It's oil rig. Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. Okay, you should also know that the electron donor in the oxidation reduction reaction is also called the reducing agent. And the electron acceptor is known as the oxidizing agent. Okay, so how do we figure out what is getting oxidized and what is getting reduced in a reaction? So there are three ways I'm gonna talk about today. The first one is oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are assigning the charge, really, or the partial charge, based on if the atom is going to gain or lose electrons in an ionic compound, or if they're in a covalent bond and they're unequally sharing, which one gets the electrons. So we usually assign the electrons to the electronegative, more electronegative atom in a covalent bond and take those away from the less electronegative atom in the covalent bond. So again, oxidation numbers, we can use those to identify which atoms have gained or lost electrons in a redox reaction. There are a few rules for assigning oxidation states or oxidation numbers. The first rule is the oxidation state of an atom in its elemental state is zero. That means Cl2, H2, O2, those things are all sharing electrons equally and so their oxidation states are zero. The oxidation state of a monoatomic ion is the same as its charge. So magnesium two plus, the oxidation state is plus two. Oxygen is usually assigned an oxida oxidation state of negative two, except in peroxides where it has an oxidation state of negative one. That's because oxygen is usually highly electronegative and takes away electrons from the atom that it's sharing with. Hydrogen, such a small nucleus atom has a low affinity for its electrons, so we usually assign it an oxidation state of plus one, except in metal hydrides, which at least in our application is not going to matter. The last rule is that some of the oxidation states should be equal to the charge on the compound. Usually that means it's equal to zero. Okay, so let's go over a couple examples. First, here is an example where silver in aqueous solution reacts with solid aluminum and forms silver as a solid or a precipitate and aluminum goes into aqueous solution. So if we look at silver, it starts out with a plus one charge and becomes a zero charge. Aluminum, on the other hand, goes from having no charge or zero to having a three plus charge. Remember for monoatomic ions, the monoatomic ion's charge is the same as its oxidation state. So we have silver that goes from a plus charge to a zero. That means it has gained a negative charge or gained an electron. Remember Leo Ger, gain electron means it's been reduced. Aluminum has gone from a zero to a three plus. That means it's lost electrons, it's lost negative value. And so losing electrons is known as oxidation. Aluminum became oxidized. Here's another example with covalently bonded compounds. 
So remember, one of the rules is that you have to label any elemental atoms with zero. So H2 shares electrons equally between the two hydrogens. So it has a, an oxidation state of zero. O2 has an oxidation state of zero as well. And then remember, we usually have oxygen has a negative two charge. Oxygen's a lot more electronegative than hydrogen. Hydrogen would be given then a plus one charge. Since there are two hydrogens here, really we have a plus two total oxidation state of the hydrogens, negative two of the oxygen. So that gives us a total oxidation number of zero. Okay, so who is losing electrons and who is gaining electrons? O2 goes from a zero to a negative two. So it gained two electrons and it became reduced. Hydrogen went from a zero to a plus one, so it lost an electron and became oxidized. So in that last example and other examples of covalently bonded molecules, electrons aren't completely lost. They're just changed the way that they are shared. Okay, in this example, the electrons in methane are shared pretty equally. The electrons in elemental oxygen, or O2, are also shared equally. When methane reacts with carbon dioxide, the electrons from carbon shift to being closer to oxygen. Therefore, carbon becomes oxidized. It loses those electrons, basically. And oxygen in water over here, the electrons come closer to it, and so it becomes reduced. If we use oxidation numbers and we assign them the way we learned, we can also show the same thing. So elemental oxygen would have an oxidation state of zero. Hydrogen, we would label as having an oxidation state of plus one. And carbon would have a minus four. And that is because there are four hydrogens here. So you really have a total of plus four. So the carbon, in order to make this have a zero net oxidation number, the carbon here has to have a negative four. In this case over here in the carbon dioxide, each oxygen has a negative two. So that means the carbon must have a plus four. So the carbon goes from having basically a negative four to having a plus four. So it's getting oxidized. In the water, the oxygen has a negative two. The hydrogens have a plus one similar to what they had before. Both of them have plus one that gives you a total oxidation number of zero. And so oxygen goes from being zero to having a negative two. And so it is gaining electrons or being reduced. The more electronegative an atom, the more energy is required to take away an electron from it. An electron loses potential energy when it shifts from a less electronegative atom toward a more electronegative atom. You should know methane when it combusts with oxygen releases a lot of energy. That's because the electrons go from this less electronegative atom to this more electronegative oxygen. So let's take this understanding of redox reactions and let's apply it to cellular respiration because cellular respiration is really a redox reaction. A lot of what's happening in cellular respiration is electrons are being ripped off one of the substrates and being passed along eventually to make ATP. So take a look at the reaction here and pause the video for a moment, guys, and write down the oxidation states and figure out what is actually being oxidized and what is being reduced. Okay, so quickly, oxygen, elemental oxygen, has a zero oxidation number. Okay, hydrogen here we assign as a plus one and oxygen here as a negative two. That means in total we have negative 12 here in glucose, we have plus 12 here in glucose, and so carbon actually has an oxidation state of zero here. Carbon dioxide, oxygen has a negative two, and there are two of those, so in order to give you an oxidation number of zero, carbon has an oxidation state of plus four. In water, oxygen has a negative two, and hydrogen has a plus one for each of them, which gives you a total oxidation number of zero. So if we take a look at this now, carbon went from a zero oxidation state to a plus four. 
So it's lost negative value, it's lost electrons. So it has been oxidized. If we look at the oxygen, it went from a zero to a negative two. So it has gained electrons or it has been reduced. So in cellular respiration, glucose gets oxidized. The electrons get taken off of it and they get transferred to somewhere. Where do they get transferred? Well, ultimately the electrons get transferred to this coenzyme NAD+. NAD plus acts as an oxidizing agent, pulls electrons away from glucose. It forms an NADH, which holds on to those high energy electrons and eventually uses those to make ATP. So what is NAD? NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Okay, it is a basically a dinucleotide, right? It has adenine right here. It has two ribose sugars. It has two phosphates connecting it. And then it has this nicotinamide side chain over here. Again, NAD is a coenzyme, takes electrons, and it carries them. So we will refer to NAD as a coenzyme electron carrier or energy carrier. So NAD plus gets two electrons from food along with hydrogens and it forms NADH. It has this extra hydrogen on it. Since it's gaining electrons, we call that reduction. This reaction, by the way, is reversible. So if we take away the hydrogen and we take away the electrons, then it gets oxidized. A simpler way to write this, guys, is NAD plus plus two electrons plus two H plus form NADH and an H plus. Again, when you're forming NADH, that is reduction. When you're forming NAD plus, that is oxidation. Okay, I mentioned there are three ways to really see if an oxidation or reduction is occurring. The first one's using the oxidation numbers. The second one is seeing which atom has the electrons in a covalent bond, which one's more electronegative. And the third way is just following the hydrogen. Along with the hydrogen, usually in our reactions, goes electrons. Okay, so if you look at it a little differently, NAD plus plus hydrogens that it gets from some food, or really what that means is an organic molecule like glucose, forms NADH one of the hydrogens just loses its electron, becomes H+, and the food or the glucose compound is left behind. NADH takes those electrons and brings them to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain goes through a series of steps where it oxidizes different molecules and then other molecules get reduced, and it ends up passing electrons along and releasing a little bit of energy at a time, rather than doing a combustion reaction of glucose and releasing all the energy at once, our cells take the energy a little at a time from the glucose and allow the glucose to be used for doing work. The energy from the ETC is yielded in the final step called chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is where ATP is made. In addition, there's another energy carrying coenzyme called flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. FAD has a similar structure to NAD. There is an adenine, nitrogenous base, a ribose, five carbon sugar, and two phosphates, as well as this flavin side chain here. When FAD gains two electrons and two hydrogen, it becomes FADH2. So gaining electrons is reduction, and along with those electrons, FADH2 is gaining energy. When FADH2 loses electrons and becomes FAD, that's oxidation. Okay, now those two electrons and hydrogen are really coming from some sort of organic source, like a sugar. And so FAD, when reacting with glucose, gets those electrons and hydrogens 
from the sugar and becomes FADH2, and then the sugar is released. So this is showing the oxidation of G3P. This is one of the stages of glycolysis that we discussed in class. We're going to start with G3P. And what forms from it is 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. Now there are a couple different ways for us to see what's happening here. One, if we just look at the change here, it goes from having a carbon with a hydrogen to a carbon with an oxygen. And I can ignore the phosphates for now. Well, oxygen is really electronegative, so that's going to change the sharing of electrons. And carbon here is going to be losing electrons to that oxygen. It's going to be oxidized. Another way we can look at it is followed hydrogens. If you look at NAD+, plus, becomes NADH. It's gaining a hydrogen, therefore gaining electrons. This is being reduced. So your NAD+, plus to NADH gets reduced, and this G3P, it's losing that hydrogen along with electrons and it's getting oxidized. The last way is you could look at oxidation numbers. If we ignore the phosphate, G3P basically has the formula C3H5O3. 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate has the formula C3H4O4. Again, oxygens have a negative two oxidation state. Hydrogens have a plus one. So this gives us total with the oxygens of negative six and the hydrogens of plus five. Okay, so that means this carbon has about a plus one oxidation state in total. Over here, the oxygens again have negative two. And that gives us a total of negative eight. And the hydrogens have a plus one, so that gives us a total of plus four. So the oxidation state of the carbon over here is plus four. So we've gone, we've gone from actually a plus one oxidation state to a plus four, losing at least two electrons. The other electron actually is just in the uh, bound with the phosphate over here, I believe. Okay, so oxidation reduction reactions, guys, occur in all the cellular respiration, and we'll talk about them occurring also in photosynthesis. Thanks, have a good day, guys. And then this flavine and this flavin, our cells take a little bit of a time. Our cells take the energy a little at a time from the glucose. 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate 1, 1, has the formula.